a new campaign. I think we should be uh, looking at to try and get our government to uh, respect what it signed up for in December. Because a, a policy which puts nuclear uh, and natural gas at the, for at the for forefront of its electricity supply is clearly inconsistent with COP21. And the two things I particularly want to emphasize uh, that uh, the renewables and its exploitation now that we, the subsidies with the cut, its exploitation locally by people like local authorities, like local community groups, uh, schools, and so on, uh, can continue uh, with the task which I'll be talking about uh, of making uh, nuclear redundant and uh, showing show that uh, nuclear in particular is too expensive cost-wise and politically. Right. The, uh, I'll start now by talking about what I mean by new all renewable electricity supply and how you can uh, uh, how local authorities can actually work out what they need to become all renewable in electricity supply. But this is a uh, fairly straightforward um, spreadsheet that I've uh, uh, written with help from the uh, from CAT, the College of Advanced uh, Alternative Technology. Um, we uh, the aim of this is to show how much wind and PV you need uh, for an all-renewable uh, electricity supply, given that uh, the, our friends in Germany, the, uh, the Combi Kraftwerk uh, project has, over the last decade, shown that you can get away with 80% uh, of uh, your electricity, electrical power, coming from those two sources. And then what you need, as well, uh, to balance supply and demand. So the red line there is the UK demand uh, uh, for a typical week in April. That means halfway between summer and winter, so the, the, the PV contribution is, is, is about, half, about half of what it is in the summer. Um, and uh, the, um, what you put onto there, that green line, is it, it, taken from two things. You have to choose a number that you think is right for the total PV capacity that you need uh, for an all renewable supply, and you take choose a number for the total wind you need for uh, an all renewable electricity supply. And then all you have to do is to know what the PV resource is like hour by hour uh, during the uh, during the day in real time, uh, hour by hour on the same date, uh, and that's what that green line is. That green line shows you the, uh, what, what you get by multiplying those two numbers together, essentially. That's saying um, how, how, much, uh, what, what, how much PV and wind is, would be contributing to that uh, supplying that electricity demand hour by hour uh, throughout that week. And, and what you can see for, um, uh, for the, if you look at the uh, five working days, which are higher in the middle, um, so Monday, Tuesday, from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, it's amazing how good the uh, what you get from the sun and what you get from the wind uh, fits uh, reasonably well to the demand. Uh, uh, that's the first thing to notice. Um, yes, uh, it, it's too high, but there we can use storage. If you uh, hear when, whenever it's too high, we can put that excess power into storage, and then uh, next day we can take it out again and move this uh, when it's too low and go up to, uh, up to the red line. And uh, uh, that, that, that way this, uh, you, you can balance supply and demand in this period. I'll talk about what happens here later and, and, and here, but just to point out uh, that uh, I'm offering this to any uh, um, LEA that wants, uh, wants to know uh, how much uh, wind and PV they need and, uh, uh, and how much needs to be backed up by biogas, which is, is, the, is the backup. Uh, but, uh, uh, and uh, I've been uh, talking to, to also to my um, local town crew that's hoping to be the first town in the country to become uh, all renewable, and they're looking at this as well. 
and you use the local as much as you can. Uh, use the local, uh, well, the southwest of the demand and the sun in the southwest, for example, uh, to make it as realistic as possible. Now, as far as nuclear is concerned, I, this plot I think shows you uh, uh, two ways in, in which uh, nuclear power is already uh, obsolete and will be become obsolete. Uh, by the time you get to an already or renewable electricity supply, and that'll be uh, what we'll move on to, how soon that will be. Because uh, when you've got a basic wind and PV like this, who needs nuclear? To, because uh, nuclear, as you all know, is inflexible. You, you once, once it starts, it has to remain at that power all year, 24, 24, 7. It's a flat line across here. The backup you need is something uh, uh, that's flexible. Uh, and biogas electricity is the obvious thing, and we'll see how that uh, moves this out. But the other thing you notice is that for about half uh, half week, half the year, nuclear power is going to be competing with, with wind for the storage. And of course, nuclear is more expensive than wind, um, and, uh, and so it comes completely crazy. And we'll, we'll see what that will mean politically uh, later on. But this, uh, you may say, hey, how about this uh, very big demand? That, that's um, uh, uh, supply so much bigger than demand. The first thing to notice is that the effect I'm talking about will happen well before um, in, at the, the weekend, when we have less demand. Uh, this, the effect I'm talking about will have too much wind anyway uh, that, that we, nuclear will have to compete with. Um, that, uh, uh, this is not a problem for, for, for wind power uh, that you've got too much uh, because the, um, the grid can do act, act for storage. Uh, we, we can mimic that in, in, this, in this, the effect of the grid being able to take away its excess to it to somewhere where it's useful um, by, uh, by looking at the, uh, the wind supply in, in Scotland, England and Wales and then average, uh, averaging those, which is what the wind, what the, uh, uh, the grid can do. And that, that brings its success down. So let's uh, move on and see what happens when you put the storage, the storage in. If you, if you put storage into the spreadsheet, uh, then uh, the, uh, you, you get this uh, uh, very good thing, supply equals demand, the lights don't go out, uh, it, it, at least in this period, and it, it identifies that you've got uh, what you need is the just uh, for, for Sunday and Monday, you need your biogas. And if you run this over the whole year, you find that just as they found in Germany, uh, you only need about 15% by power biogas electricity to back up your wind and PV and only 5% storage. So with the nuclear and the fossil fuel people fire it at us, we need lots of storage, expensive storage before PV takes and wind takes off. That is not necessary at all. It's only, it's only 5%. Right. Now, uh, I get extremely annoyed when we hear about uh, what the uh, Dave Irons has been talking about and uh, what I saw in the Guardian the other day. Everybody says when, when the, the other side say to us, um, but of course uh, the, the, the alternatives to entry point C, like wind and solar, can't deliver the capacity in time. I gather that's what Dave Irons says, and it was in the Guardian on the financial pages last week. Uh, a statement being repeated in our, perhaps our most responsible paper. I think um, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is one thing we need to knock on the head uh, straight away. But if you listen to what they're saying, but they can't deliver fast enough, um, then that's obviously implying uh, that, that clearly that uh, we, we can't produce the 3.2 gigawatts. 3.2 gigawatts in 2030, if we're lucky, which is what Hinky Point C uh, is promising us. So let's put it in perspective. How are the renewables doing? Um, what, do, what, do people, what do people think uh, the renewable doing this? Um, audience here, I'd like to do participation. If you, 
Uh, I'd like to put up your hands if you, you think perhaps we are a little bit below 3.2 uh, gigawatts. It's, it's, if the people think we're, we've got um, a bit below 3.2 gigawatts of uh, renewables in the UK at the moment, anybody think that? The question is, um, heavy duty point C is going to deliver 3.2 gigawatts in, in 2030, right? At the earliest. Uh, and they're basically saying if we don't have EPC, the renewables won't be able to provide, provide that capacity uh, uh, by that time. They can't expand that fast. Uh, that's what, she, that's what she, she was saying, I understand, and that's certainly what was said in The Guardian last week. Now, uh, so therefore, let's see where are we at the moment, how much have we got to deliver, <laughs> and how soon can we deliver it. That's what the rest of my talk is going to be about. Um, so let's see where we start from. How, if, if people think we've got less than 3.2 gigawatts of renewable power in the UK at this very moment, uh, can you put up your hands? No, good, great, you're on the ball. Uh, and who thinks we've got a, we have got more? <laughs> who thinks we've got more? Great, good to see it. Great to see you're on the ball and awake. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, anybody want to say that uh, oh, we've got 10 times as much? Anybody want to put, stick their neck out and say we've got 10 times as much? Well done. Give the, two, give the three of them a prize. Yes. <laughs> we are, and a big clap. Yeah. We are, believe it or not, and I'm clearly telling mine does not believe it, we are already 10 times uh, where we are at, uh, the, at the end of 2015. Now, we've got a good opportunity here for a bit of publicity because that's, a, that's a, an extrapolating figure. We don't know the figure, and it's expanding exponentially, so it takes a long time to count it up. We won't know the final figure probably until July. So what I'm saying, suggesting is that the uh, you decree lo uh, local authorities uh, have get ready for a big, uh, for a big um, PR session <laughs> when the figures come out. Dex's own figure say 31, uh, 31 gigawatts. Uh, our prediction is 32, and I'm sure it's bigger than that. So, Sneakies, yeah. I'm told you're a little bit close to oh, the microphone, yeah, so... Um, your voice is distorted a little bit, quite Okay. But you're getting the message across all the same. I'm going to... <laughs> okay. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll try and control myself. But I get so wound up with the garden <laughs> and, and uh, people on desert island discs and say things like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's go for a big, uh, t when it's 10, we're 10 times uh, uh, what, uh, what the, the um, when we, we, we show that in, at the end of 2015, we're at 10 times uh, what a 50 point C is proposing, uh, then I think we, make a, we should make a big splash. How fast can we get to an all-renewable electricity supply? This is uh, perhaps relevant. This is actually uh, um, a uh, what the um, in, in paper that I published with Casper is the the head of the Compton Craft Work uh, um, uh, experiment here in, 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 in Germany, um, and this is. Um, Something you've not seen before, and something the nuclear industry doesn't want you to see or become. <laughs> um, basically, uh, the, the plot here, the, usually on a plot, the horizontal lines uh, are, indicate, of course, that you've gone up by one or gone up by two at the top. The expansion of PV has been so fast in all these countries that you have to represent it by this sort of scale uh, 10 here and 100 there. And, and a straight line here is, is what's known as an exponential, and all these countries, PV has rise, been riding, rising exponentially. And in answer uh, to one of the questions this morning, look at what China is now doing in, P, in PV. And that is a PV plus wind, and I, I think I've got their wind. No, I haven't. Their wind is, 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 is going in fast. Basically, in answer to the question this morning, PV plus wind in China, for the last two years, it's expand, it been expanded 10 times as fast as their nuclear. So they've got the message, and that's why they want to come here to sell some new nuclear reactors. Uh, because uh, you know, they're in trouble there. Uh, and uh, they're doing it. They don't need it because of this. Now, they, they, even, even in dear old UK, uh, uh, that expansion is faster than this 
Uh, some of you are of a certain age, I noticed, so you will remember the second half of the 90s. The second half of the 90s, remember how this technology took off? That, we're taking off faster than that. Had we not had the cuts, uh, and, we, so, and we followed Germany, what Germany did seven years earlier, we would have hit this, with, that's the all-renewable target that you get from the program I showed you. That's how much that's how much PV installations you need for an all renewable electric, electricity supply in 2020. Of course, notice this uh, 2025, that's 1.6 gigawatts, way, way uh, more than an order of energy for life. Um, so it's, uh, that's, that was good news. Even onshore, onshore wind was uh, expanding exponentially for the past decade, and it continued would hit its Convict Craft work uh, target by 2022. Again, uh, the nuclear is uh, negligible. And this is the, the real uh, uh, amazing uh, result here that, uh, again, nobody seems to know about because it's never been plotted this way. This is offshore wind, it's expanding exponentially from its K from, from, from when it started. And yes, you expect exponential expansion to something like this that could be mass produced off a PV on a roof, which uh, essentially is simply the semiconductor and can, can show the same thing. But for a massive turbine's new technology, very difficult environment, and the fact that it's increased steadily exponentially uh, over that, um, over, over a whole decade is incredible. And it would hit the target by 2021. So had it not been for the cuts, we'd have had and all we, 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 would have, uh, we could have had an all renewable electricity uh, supply. But, now, but I will focus uh, on the biogas backup, because this is extremely important, and this is where local authorities can, can uh, make a great difference, um, I, I think. The, um, the ideal, I think, is biogas from anaerobic digestion in uh, sy systems like this, in which you put the farm waste, crop waste, uh, food waste, and uh, it decays the biomethane that you can use for um, to generate electricity or, or put gas into, into the gas grid. It's got a, a very low carbon footprint. It could be negative because what it's doing, of course, is were, were that waste left on, on the farm, on the fields, or uh, in, put in landfill, if this had been put in landfill, it would eventually decay to an awful lot of greenhouse gases. So, um, it is, uh, what's the flexible capacity problem? I see it's the low carbon answer to it. Um, uh, government has at last woken up to the fact that we've got a certain amount of renewables, I don't want to admit how much, uh, but they, that we've got it, and that nuclear power is, an extri is a, just a completely impossible way to back it up. And so we need a backup. And um, uh, so we need flexible capacity. So uh, they, they, they think it's great, another way to be able to give uh, um, subsidies to their friends in the fossil fuel industry and that's what they're doing at the moment and what I want uh, the local authorities to do is follow what Bristol's done and, and, and if the people from local authorities here are good, I'd love to chat to you afterwards about what your own uh, policy is on this but basically Bristol say when it got was flooded flooded with uh, uh, um, with proposals for uh, small um, diesel generators with even higher um, carbon footprints uh, than, than natural gas. Uh, they, they basically ruled them out on environmental grounds. And, um, and, and when, but when they turn it down, I suggest that we, we do this positively. We say, yes, we would approve it if, it, if the gas came from uh, anaerobic digestion. And of course, Bristol, uh, people know it's certainly one local authority which is leading on this. It's got an award-winning anaerobic digestion plant that takes the city waste. Uh, and, and so uh, what all they have to do is to approve a, uh, a biogas electricity generator uh, and they, they, they take the subsidy. So this, uh, I hope um, this is um, one of the things, that one of the great, um, the many aims I think of uh, my new Get From The Sun uh, uh, proposal, get local authorities uh, to, to come in on this, on this the, the, the backup. Right, now, exponentially rising the demand and exponentially rising markets. Now, uh, what does that say in terms of economics? Of course, uh, a, uh, you can't expect a Tory government to understand economics. 
uh, uh, it means prices, uh, prices fall. That's why it goes up exponentially, prices fall and therefore demand rises. That's the, that's the basis of uh, economics. Any physicist knows that. Um, uh, and and it, is, it is, if you plot uh, as, as a function of how much renewable power we've got as a function, as a fraction of our all renewable targets along here, uh, not only are we falling, uh, the price of our wholesale price of electricity falling, um, people may have been aware, but it's falling at a rate which is consistent with what Germany have got at their more advanced stage. They're down to, they're down to 2.4 pounds per kilowatt hour. Anybody remember that number? 2.4 pounds per kilowatt hour. So again, people of a certain age, back in 2006, when the then Labour government, to its, for its sins, uh, uh, decided to go to nuclear, that's what Arriva was quoting for its nuclear power. What an irony. <laughs> um, uh, we could be there, uh, as we'll see when we, we, we could achieve that if we follow what, to do, what Germany is doing. Um, by the way, good energy, good energy has shown that the, the fall in the UK, that big fall was due to the cheap and new renewables coming online. And you can see it, the same thing for Germany. Basically, it goes down faster in the summer when the sun's shining. A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, right. I have a couple of slides. Perfect, yeah. Okay, right. Here it is, I've added, I've added them all together, and so we can see what the, what the cuts are going to do. And I really like Linda's uh, point this morning, when she had a wonderful uh, tone of phrase, when she said the, uh, one of the problems with nuclear is that it's strangling the, uh, the renewables. Here is the, the effect of strangulation. It looks like, it looks like somebody with a, with, a, with, something, uh, with a scarf around their neck being tied. <laughs> This is deck. This is deck along here. This is what deck hopes has now happened the, 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 to the renewables. Instead of going up here, business as usual, uh, with, uh, now they hope they've killed it, and they have really hoping they couldn't kill it. If you look at the small, uh, you look at the small print, um, because from 2020 to 2030, yes, there's a little bit of an expansion suggested there, but it's all offshore wind essentially. So they're reckoning this is a Tory government intervening in the market to kill two exponentially rising uh, industries, the onshore wind and the uh, PV. I, I think it's utterly insane and it's clearly counter to any, any, any conservative philosophy uh, that uh, uh, one, one would have thought. Uh, so yeah, it's Stalinist, of course, essentially. Okay, now let's see what will happen. What I've done here is make a, a fairly uh, um, pessimistic assumption. It's basically saying, supposing offshore, um, onshore wind and PV expand at half the lowest rate they achieved in the last decade, half the lowest rate after the, after the cuts. And let's, let's, because Amber Rudd said she actually likes uh, offshore wind, uh, at least if it keeps its costs, it cuts its costs, which it is doing, nuclear doesn't. But never mind. Uh, the, um, the basically, we will uh, follow that line. Uh, so we'll look to see what happens to that to, in the cost. And we know what's going to happen when you've got a certain penetration of renewables because the Germans have shown us. Shown us what happens, so we can build it in. This is a very important, my final graph uh, is, is extremely important. It's decks in blue. We have decks on deck extrapolating what's going to happen to the wholesale electricity price in the future. They have a range of scenarios which range from this high cost to a low cost that reflects the fact that the foot, it is falling at the moment, the price, but they reckon it's going to rise from 2020. Why? And because they've got, it's got to. It's got to go up here or they're going to look completely stupid. It's got to go up. This is the guaranteed price for Hindi 3.C. So it's got to go up. Now, no, there's various things that you conclude from that. Is um, uh, uh, one very important point. If you've got any anti-fracking people around here, bear in mind. Uh, make sure you, you you make this particular point. Uh, they don't even believe their own propaganda. The fracking is going to reduce the price of natural gas because that's the the lowest uh, that the price will go in the 2030s. Or maybe they realise uh, that the anti-frackers are going to win. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this, this is dominated by, uh, by fossil fuel. And that's the other complete um, 
completely, that's the other complete anomaly of what the, uh, this plan is doing, because they need, with, with, with uh, natural gas having uh, a carbon footprint not nine times that above the um, community climate change limit, they're banking on uh, Hinky Forest C to bring down their carbon, uh, their carbon footprint on a course, as we well know, on a myth that it's, uh, that it's, uh, uh, that it's come, it's low. So down here, this full blue line is, if you assume debt's own totally unrealistic future expansion, the price still falls. Here's my pessimistic, of course, going through the German prices, and on the pessimistic, by 2025, uh, you and I, and our descendants, will be paying 7p out of every 9p uh, for, for, for that electricity. And what's going to happen to that electricity, uh, we'll see in my conclusions. Okay, it's redundant. I, I think I've made, I've made the case it's redundant, uh, you know, because it's inflexible. Uh, we would have hit the target if I hadn't needed the cuts. Now, I'm asking for LA to reject new fossil fuel uh, flexible capacity and support biogas as an alternative. And now we come to this point. For half a year, EDF will be selling HPC power where? Nobody will want to buy. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, seven uh, P out of nine P's um, paid by these famous people. The, these are the hardworking bill payers that the Conservatives are, are so worried about. And well, who's going to buy it? The French. What a great idea, EDF, to come up. Because where else did nobody in this country want to, would want to buy it? Because we've got cheap wind. So we sell it to France. That's the plan. Now, now the great thing is, if we can show by 2020 that, uh, that, that, that the renewables are going to continue by our pessimistic expansion, then it would be extremely embarrassing. This scenario is going to be extremely embarrassing for the, for the government to sell that at the next election. So that's the challenge for getting from the sun. To, to, for us all locally to be expanding PV and wind. Uh, and uh, so that it would be very clear if the scenario goes out. Of course, they would hopefully killed, killed uh, Hinky Point C before then. But um, if we haven't, this would look at a very stupid scenario that we are funding uh, cheap uh, electricity in the French. That won't go down very well at all, particularly in the Conservative electorate. Uh, and so the, um, but what I'm saying, if you, if you, if you were sensible, which of course, uh, Osborne, that's asking a lot of Osborne. He would restore the cuts, uh, pay it from tax, which of course is what he does, those bigger subsidies for fossil fuels. That's how they're paying. Pay it by tax, so it doesn't appear as a levy on, on, on the bill. And um, then by 2020, we're not predicting, we're saying on the German experience, uh, the, the pr our price of our electricity would drop to 2.4p. And that could be a winner for him. In the, certainly when he wants to take over from Cameron as well, that could be a winner. So why don't we try and persuade in his own self-interest, which is probably the only... Oh, I've got to be careful what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, okay. Why don't we try and persuade him, to his better instincts, uh, uh, to, to, um, uh, to restore the subject? Um, uh, final point, okay. All renewable, non-nuclear electricity, electricity supplies. Okay, uh, that's what the aim of uh, Get It From The Sun I uh, just want to line out which of you are already members of the club. Uh, um, if you put up your hand, if your home electricity comes from an all renewable electricity supply like Good Energy, fantastic! Best response I've had. But there's still some hands down. <laughs> Best response I've had, uh, more than 50% I've some. As I say, well done. You clap yourself. But those others, uh, you can get it Monday morning, a five minute phone call, good energy to electricity, that's all you have to do. They'll do the dirty work for you. They'll tell your current fossil fuel and nuclear supplier where to, uh, where to put their nasty, uh, uh, their nasty uh, electricity. And, um, uh, and finally, does anybody have an LA that's all renewable? Is anybody an asset to work for or uh, uh, or um, living in a, a, a UK LEA, I, there was one American, uh, I think Linda, your, your local area is, um, administrative area is already, is not quite all renewable, but gets all this electricity. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Any LEAs in the UK? Right. 
Anyway, that's the challenge to finish. That's the challenge for forget it from the sun. Let's get the LEAs. Surely the nuclear free LEAs would not want to get there. I mean, they'd be, if they get, would want to get their uh, uh, electricity from electricity or, or, or uh, good energy. That's the way to keep the demand rising. Thank you for your